In our quest to uncover the location of the Ark of the Covenant, we are using Ptolemy's map of the ancient world from 150 AD, which provides clues that this powerful relic may have been smuggled out of Egypt by the Jewish people to what is now modern-day Ethiopia. Joining us on our trek is Zabayeni, a local fixture with extensive connections and knowledge on ancient settlements in Ethiopia, the key to solving this 2,000-year-old mystery. We've been tracing the Ark all the way from Jerusalem. We yeah. believe it left Egypt at some point, and we believe Ethiopia is the next logical place. Are we on the right track? You are in the right place for all the right reasons. There has been a Jewish influence, a Jewish link here, so it totally makes sense for the Ark to follow through the Nile and to settle in this place. Got it. Zab has brought us to the banks of Lake Dana, at the source of the Blue Nile. If the Jewish people followed the Nile south from Egypt to Ethiopia, this is where their journey would have most likely ended. So we are now literally a few meters from the source of the Nile. Exactly. Well, if you don't mind taking us there, we'd love to see it. At about 6,000 feet above sea level, Lake Tana is the highest and largest lake in Ethiopia. Believed by many to have been visited by Mary, Joseph, and Jesus, this isolated location is sacred grounds for all locals. The lake has got so many monasteries, so many historical places, and very powerful. So if the Jewish people made it to Lake Tana, is there a safe place here to hide the Ark? Tana Kirkos. Tana Kirkos. What is Tana Kirkos? I've got a map here. OK, let's have a look. So this is Lake Tana. OK. Tana Kirkos being here, this is surrounded by, by mountains. Tana Kirkos is a remote island in the eastern part of Lake Tana, three miles from the nearest land. So what I'm seeing on this on this map, Zab, is essentially kind of a safe place, clearly far away from any easy access. Exactly. It is very difficult to get there. Can you take us to Tana Kirkos? The only way to get to Tana Kirkos is using a traditional old method of transport using papyrus boats. Let's get on a boat. Yeah. Because of deep religious and royal history, Tana Kirkos is considered so sacred by locals that motorized boats are discouraged from approaching it. Yeah, a little bit steady. Oh, okay. Take your time, get comfortable. Oh, this is nice. Make yourself at home, this huh? Is, this is luxurious. Yeah. The three-mile journey to this sacred island takes two hours by paddling these papyrus boats. How are you doing back there, man? Unbelievable. But it's exactly how the keepers of the Ark would have traveled this area over 2,000 years ago. This is one of the most ancient forms of travel on the planet. What better way to reach this sacred, secret peninsula of Santa Kirkos? That's awesome. Absolutely magnificent. Right as we're arriving, exhausted from this journey, on um, this kind of mystical lake rises this enormous wall of rock. You feel like you're really arriving to somewhere ancient, somewhere sacred, somewhere really special. Outsiders are forbidden to visit Tana Kirkos. The only way onto the island is to be permitted access by the monks who live there. Guys. Salam. Justin Ibarra. Justin. I'm Aina Kulu. Aina Kulu. Aina Kulu. Nice to meet you. Deacon Anakulu Mulageta has lived at the monastery on Tana Kirkos for 15 years. Without his permission, we can go no further onto the island. OK, what was your purpose to be here today? We've been on a really long journey, so I'm going to be completely honest with you. We're essentially looking for where the Ark of the Covenant might have been, where it might have ended up, and where it is now. Oh, it's nice. Come on and follow me. Lead the way, Anakulu. We're unsure exactly where Deacon Anakulu is leading us, but with him granting us unprecedented access to the island, we're going to follow him wherever he takes us. So this is uh, one of the historic and iconic places. After a two-mile hike to the interior of the island, we reach a small hut perched on the mountaintop. Early. Judaistic custom, which is long back to the story of the journey of Menelik. When he was age 20, he went to visit his uh, father, Solomon. Together with the Ark of the Covenant, they came to Ethiopia. 
Many Ethiopians believe Menelik's father was King Solomon, who built a temple to house the Ark in Jerusalem, and Menelik's mother was Queen of Ethiopia. According to Deacon Anakulu, at the age of 20, Menelik was ordered by his father to secretly bring the Ark to Ethiopia. And then they came to this island, they came to Tanakarkos with the Ark of the Covenant? Yeah. Is there any actual proof that the Ark made it to this very place? Yes, this is where you are standing, the Ark is kept. Here, on this stone. On this rock. This is where the Ark was, was kept? Kept here. On this stone? Yep. Thousands what? of years ago? Yep. You so, can see the holes. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. These, these holes were supporting poles mm -hmm. that were suspending the Ark in the air, suspending it yeah. above the ground. Yeah. We know that the Ark of the Covenant was held by these carrying poles. So according to the young deacon, these carrying poles would have been placed on the ground on these drilled holes, suspending it above the ground on this sacred outcropping. These are the marks. They're still in the stone. Is it okay if we investigate the site? Definitely. Else. Okay. The Bible mentions the Ark over 200 times and consistently gives very precise measurements for this golden box with a lid. 4.4 feet long, 2.7 feet wide, and 2.7 feet high. 20 inches? Mm, about two feet. Exactly. These holes are spread out in the outline of a box with the same precise measurements of the Ark of the Covenant as we know them. So we're looking at evidence that matches up with the physical description of the Ark. What would have been happening thousands of years ago when the Ark was here on these rocks? Since the Ark is here, this place becomes a center of ritual. The animal sacrifices. Yes. Inside there is the altar where the blood is kept during the animal sacrifice. The actual altar that- The, the that rock next... altar, yeah, which is next to the Ark. And it's right inside of there. Yeah. We would love to take a look. Is it possible? Yes. According to the Old Testament, animal sacrifice in the presence of the Ark was a common practice. So the fact that this ritual was done right on this spot lends credence to the deacon's claim that the Ark was here. So this is the actual sacrificial altar? Yeah. Wow. This thing would have been placed one or two feet from the Ark of the Covenant as a lamb was slaughtered, its blood was collected. It's pretty astounding. Watch, this is incredible. We found evidence the Ark could have been at this location, but it's clearly no longer here. So the question is, is it still on the island?